Okay, welcome back. In this video, we will continue our series on uh, pharmacology for health professionals. In this video, we'll go over chapter number 12, hematologic drugs. Learning objectives for this chapter, compare and contrast the use and route of administration of heparin with that of other uh, anticoagulant drugs. Explain how patients taking certain oral anticoagulant drugs must restrict their diet. Differentiate between the therapeutic effects of anticoagulant drugs and thrombolytic drugs. Describe several different ways in which drugs are used to treat anemia. When given the name of a well-known hematologic generic drug, identify the trade name. When given the generic and trade name of a hematologic drug, identify what drug category it belongs to and what disease it would be used to treat. When given the hematologic drug category, identify several generic and trade names that are found in that category. And when given an ending common to several generic drugs, identify the related drug category. Our right, first type of drug that we'll talk about for this chapter are anticoagulant drugs. Now the blood will coagulate to help form a blood clot. This involves a very complex a cascading series of steps involving uh, many different components. One of the key things that are involved are the clotting factors. And these clotting factors are produced by the liver. And they are numbered from 1 to 13. And these are also dependent on the presence of vitamin K. Some other key components of a clot being formed, uh, thromboplastin, and also platelets. So when there's an injury that occurs, the injured tissue will release a thromboplastin, which will then activate the clotting factors within the blood. So as this happens, platelets that are normally floating around in blood start to stick to the damaged tissues. It will start to form a platelet plug, and that process is called a platelet aggregation. So the sooner these platelets clump together, the quicker the, the blood loss can be prevented. Now the clotting factors will eventually will produce thrombin, fibrinogen, which will end up being converted into a product called fibrin, which acts as a very sticky, very strong type of, of a spider web, is a good way to think about it. And this, this netting of fibrin will help trap uh, red blood cells as they go by the injured area and end up basically collecting all these cells to help form a blood clot. Now blood clots can form in arteries and in veins. When they form in arteries, they're mainly composed of uh, platelet clumps. When they form in veins, they're mainly composed of uh, fibrin and red blood cells. Now, anticoagulant drugs are used to prevent blood clots in patients if they have arteriosclerosis of the arteries, or if they have atrial fibrillation, or if they have uh, acute coronary syndrome, such as uh, unstable angina or myocardial infarction, or people with a history of previous strokes or previous myocardial infarctions. It also used to help prevent blood clots performing in patients who have an artificial heart valve. And these types of drugs can also be used to treat DVT, deep vein uh, thrombosis, and also pulmonary embolisms. In addition to those, uh, anticoagulants also will help provide anticoagulation during hemodialysis for patients, especially with those who are in chronic renal failure or who are on cardiopulmonary bypass during an open-heart surgery. When it comes to the, the actions of these drugs, uh, anticoagulants will inhibit the action of clotting factors in the blood, and they will inhibit the formation of these clotting factors in the liver that require vitamin K. Anticoagulants also act to prevent platelets from adhering to the site of injury. If those platelets can't stick to the, the damaged tissue, then they can't form that platelet plug or that platelet aggregation, which would then activate the clotting factor. The platelets never get stuck there to begin with. That stops the whole cascade process from moving forward. Anticoagulants also act to decrease the viscosity of the blood. Anticoagulants also increase the, the flexibility of red blood cells to help promote the flow of blood. All right, now we'll talk about certain types of anticoagulant drugs. Uh, the first one, heparin and low molecular weight heparin drugs. Heparin was the very first anticoagulant drug developed. And this works by inhibiting clotting factor number 10 in the blood. And this drug is composed of large molecules that are not easily absorbed. And only 20 to 30 percent of a dose actually exerts a therapeutic effect on the patient. Uh, some other details about heparin, they're always measured in units, and this drug is given uh, either subcutaneously or intravenously. And there's another version of heparin called low molecular weight heparin, or LMWH. This is created by breaking apart and decreasing the size of the original heparin molecule. And by doing so, almost the entire dose of LMWH is absorbed and exerts a therapeutic effect. And just like heparin, this acts to inhibit the clotting factor number 10 in the blood. Now this type of drug is uh, given subcutaneously. It can either be measured in units or in milligrams. Some examples of uh, this type that will be measured in units, dalteparin, which is sold under the trade name uh, Fragment, tenzaparin, which is sold under the trade name Inahep. A type of the LMWH that would be measured in milligrams. 
would be anoxaparin, which is sold under the trade name Lovanox. When it comes to heparin and low molecular weight heparin, both are made from the intestines of either cows or from pigs. If the patient is receiving a subcutaneous low molecular weight heparin administered by a nurse in the hospital, they are switched to a, an oral anticoagulant drug before they're able to be discharged to go home. Now we'll talk about a drug controversy. An increasingly large number of drugs and drug ingredients are manufactured outside of the United States. In February 2008, Baxter International, which supplies one half of the heparin use of the United States, announced it would discontinue its heparin product. This was because of 350 serious allergic reactions or deaths that were associated with Baxter's heparin product in the preceding three months. Now, Baxter had obtained uh, the active ingredient for its heparin product from a Chinese manufacturing plant. The FDA approved this company without inspecting it because it confused its name with that of another Chinese manufacturing plant that had already been inspected. All right, now I'll talk about another type of anticoagulant drug, another one that's very uh, well known, uh, warfarin. This is sold under the trade names uh, Coumadin or Gentovin. And this type of drug acts to block uh, vitamin K. It also works by keeping the liver from producing clotting factors that are dependent on the presence of vitamin K. Okay, warfarin also acts to directly block the clotting factors 2, 7, and 10. Uh, warfarin is measured in milligrams and can be given either orally or intravenously. This leads us to another drug alert. Uh, patients that are taking warfarin, either Coumadin or uh, Gentovin, for long-term anticoagulant therapy should monitor their dietary intake of certain types of foods. Leafy green vegetables like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, spinach, uh, bok choy, kale, parsley, uh, turnip greens, also beef liver, uh, chickpeas, uh, and soy products contain large amounts of vitamin K that can decrease the therapeutic effect of the anticoagulant drug. The main reason of why warfarin works so well is, is because it blocks vitamin K. So if a patient has a diet that's high in vitamin K, it's going to negate the therapeutic effect of the drug that you are taking. So this is called antagonism. So on the other hand, garlic has its own natural anticoagulant effect that can actually multiply the effect of a anticoagulant drug. This is called synergism. This is making it work better. Another type of uh, anticoagulant drugs are platelet aggregation inhibitor drugs. And these prevent platelets from adhering to the site of the injury. If they can't do that, then they can't clump together or form the platelet aggregation, or the platelet plug, as it's called. And this is the very first step in forming of a clot. Now, some drugs will block a receptor on platelets, and some will actually prevent the platelets from binding to fibrinogen, which is a factor number one. Now, some of these drugs are used to prevent blood clots in patients who are going a certain procedures, such as angioplasty, a stent placement, or cardiac valve surgery. And these kinds of drugs can also be given to patients who in the past have had a myocardial infarction, a stroke, or acute coronary syndrome. These are some examples of uh, platelet aggregation inhibitors. Xylostazole, which is sold under the trade name Pletal. This is a vasodilator that's used to treat uh, peripheral vascular disease and uh, intermittent uh, claudication. And this is pain that's usually found in the legs uh, caused by uh, too little blood flow. And usually accompanies uh, exercise. Dipyridamol which is sold under the name Presenting. This is given in conjunction with other anticoagulants to enhance their effectiveness. And this specifically prevents platelets from adhering to artificial heart valves. Another example, uh, Abcixamab, which is sold under the trade name Riopro. Generic aspirin, common trade names here would be Bayer's Children Aspirin, Ecotrin Adult, Low Strength. Clopidogrel, which is sold under the name Plavix. Eftipapatine, which is sold under the name Integralin. Presagrel, sold under the name uh, Effient. Ticagrelor, sold under the name Brylenta. Ticlopidine, sold under the name uh, Ticlid. And Terofaban, which is sold under the name Agristat. It's common to see anticoagulant drugs that are sold as combination drugs. An example of that would be uh, Agrinox. This is a combination of uh, both aspirin and dipyridamol. It's another type of anticoagulant drugs, thrombin inhibitors. And it's like the name implies, they inhibit the action of thrombin. These will bind to the receptor sites of both circulating thrombin in the blood, and the thrombin is already incorporated into the blood clot. Now these are used to prevent blood clots in patients with an unstable angina, or who are undergoing coronary artery uh, angioplasty, or a joint replacement surgery. And they can also be used to help prevent deep venous thrombosis. Here's some examples of uh, thrombin inhibitors. Bivalirudin, sold under the trade name Angiomax. Dibigatrin, sold under the name Pradaxa. 
Dizarudin, sold under the trade name Iprovask, and some thrombin inhibitors are used to prevent blood clots in patients with heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, which is a deficiency in platelets within the blood. And some examples of these kinds of thrombin inhibitors would include Argatroban and also Leparudin, which is sold under the trade name Refludan. Another type of anticoagulant drugs, factor 10A inhibitor drugs. These will inhibit the action of a clotting factor 10A, which is a subset of a clotting factor 10. And these have no effect on thrombin or on platelets. Now some other uses for anticoagulants, also used to treat deep venous thrombosis. And they can also be used to prevent pulmonary embolism in patients who are undergoing uh, abdominal surgeries or joint replacements. Some examples of this type of drug would be apixaban, which is sold under the trade name uh, Eliquis. Uh, Fondaparinux, which is sold under the name uh, Rixtra. Rivaroxaban, which is sold under the name uh, Xarelto. See, there are other drugs that are given to help prevent blood clots. An example of that would be pedoxifilin, also known as the trade name uh, Trentol. This acts by decreasing uh, blood viscosity, helps to increase the flexibility of red blood cells, and also to improve the blood flow in patients with narrowing of the arteries. All right, now we'll talk about thrombolytic drugs. Now, we just talked about a large series of anticoagulant drugs. Now, these can only prevent blood clots from forming or enlarging. Now, these are not effective in dissolving existing blood clots. Now, thrombolytic enzyme drugs are used to break apart or lyse a blood clot once it has already formed. And the way these kinds of drugs act, they will bind to fibrin strands within the clot. They will convert a plasminogen in the clot to plasmin. And as the fibrin strands break apart, the clot will dissolve. Uh, thrombolytic enzyme drugs, these were the first drugs that could actually dissolve a clot. And it's revolutionized the treatment for uh, myocardial infarctions and strokes. But these are no longer on the market. Another type of uh, thrombolytic drug are TPAs, uh, tissue plasminogen activators. These are created by using recombinant DNA technology. And their action is essentially the same as th uh, thrombolytic enzyme drugs. And these kinds of drugs are given while a patient is going through a myocardial infarction, or while they're having a stroke, or while they're having a pulmonary embolism. Now these are used to dissolve a blood clot that has already formed within the coronary arteries or the arteries of the brain and in the lung. Now some examples of uh, TPAs, alteplase, also known as activase or cath flow activase. These are used to break up a blood clot that has formed within a central venous catheter. Rediplase, also known as redivase, f tipopatide also known as integralin, and a terifaban, which is also known as agrostat. Okay, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat anemia. Now, anemia is a decrease in the number of red blood cells that are produced in the red bone marrow. Another term for uh, red blood cells are erythrocytes. Now, this could be due to insufficient amounts of amino acids or folic acid or iron or vitamin B12. Anemia can be caused by disease or cancer or radiation or chemotherapy drugs that end up damaging the red bone marrow where blood cells are produced. Now anemia may be the result of some conditions such as an excessive loss of blood such as in a trauma or hemophilia. It can also be the result from an increased destruction of fragile blood cells. And a good example of that would be sickle cell anemia. Our right, first kind of drug that we'll talk about are the vitamin B12 drugs and these will help treat pernicious anemia. Some examples of this kind of drug would be cyanocobalamin sold under the drug name or trade name uh, Siamin and Noscobol. Hydroxocobalamin, which also is known as Hydrochristi-12. Now all generic drugs that have the term ferrous or iron in their names are iron supplements. These are used to treat iron uh, deficiency anemia. Another type of drugs that could be used to treat anemia are erythropoietin-like drugs that are created with uh, recombinant DNA technology. Now, even though these are created through recombinant DNA technology, this is very similar to natural erythropoietin, which is a hormone produced by the kidneys, and it controls uh, how much red blood cells are produced. And this is used to treat uh, various types of anemia. And some examples of uh, this type of drug would be darbopoietin alpha, also known as Arnesp, epoietin alpha, also known as uh, epigen or procrit, and also epoietin beta, which is also known as merogen. Uh, folic acid is a B vitamin that is used to treat uh, folic acid anemia, which is also known as megaloblastic anemia. An example of this kind of drug would be oxymethylone, which is also known as anadrol 50. This is an anabolic steroid drug. 
and is used to treat various types of anemia, as well as anemia that is caused by chemotherapy. There's some examples of this type of drug, Arancep, Epigen or Procrit, Smerigen, E-point beta methoxy uh, polyethylene glycol, also known as Bercera, Ferrous fumarate, also known as uh, Ferro sequels, Ferrous gluconate, also known as Vergon. Right, some other examples that would be in its class of drugs, uh, Ferrous sulfate, also known as Theosol or Ferrinsol or slow FE, Hydroxogobalamin, Iron dextran, Iron sucrose, also known as uh, Venifer, Oxymethylone, also known as Androl 50, Pagan Esetide, also known as Omantes, and Sodium Ferroglutinate, also known as Ferlicid. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat uh, hemophilia. Now, hemophilia is an inherited genetic abnormality that causes a deficiency of a, a specific type of clotting factor. Now, patients will continue to bleed for a very long period of time following even a very minor injury. And there are various types of hemophilia, depending on uh, what clotting factor is affected. Hemophilia A is caused by a lack of clotting factor number 8, and this is the most common type of hemophilia. Hemophilia B is caused by a lack of clotting factor number 9. Hemophilia C is caused by a lack of factor number 11. So when an injury occurs in a patient like this, the bleeding will get into the body cavities, into organs, uh, into joints, can end up causing uh, severe pain, it can even cause death if it's not recognized you know, quickly and treated quickly. And one very particular type of drug that's been developed is called coagulin B. Now this uses a viral therapy to actually deliver the cellular gene that directs the patient's liver to produce clotting factor number 9. And then factors 7A, 8, and 9 are the actual blood clotting factors within manufactured drug form that a patient can take. And some examples of drugs that would treat hemophilia. Anti-inhibitor coagulant complex, also known as Theba NF. Factor 7A, which is sold under the name Novo 7. Factor 8, also known as Hemophil M. Factor 9, also known as Bebulin VH or Benefix. And factor number 13, which is known as Corefact. So these last four that are listed here are drug forms of the actual clotting factors you would normally find and should normally find in a person's blood. See, another way you could treat patients with hemophilia are by giving them blood transfusions or clotting factors that are derived from donated blood. The drug phytonidione, which is known as the trade name mephitin, is a vitamin K drug that is given prophylactically to all newborns to prevent hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. And this drug is also used to treat bleeding disorders in patients whose livers don't make enough factor 2, 7, 9, or 10. And this drug can also be used to treat patients who have received an overdose of an anticoagulant drug. Within a newborn, uh, the blood levels of vitamin K are less than 60% of what it would be for a normal uh, person. However, a one-time intramuscular dose is sufficient to temporarily correct the deficiency until vitamin K levels are normal, usually by, by the time that newborn is six weeks old. I will end this chapter with a historical note. Uh, the political climate that we live in today was the indirect result of someone with hemophilia. Tsar Nicholas uh, II of Russia and his wife Alexandra had four female children before they finally had Alexei, their heir to the throne, the only male child. Alexei had hemophilia because his mother was a carrier of the hemophilia gene and was very frequently near death. Now, obsessed with their son's illness, Tsar Nicholas and Alexandra paid little attention to the affairs uh, of Russia and the widespread economic depression general affairs of state, and all this led to a rising call for political reform. And because of this, the entire family was executed during the Bolshevik Revolution, thus ending the Tsar's form of government forever in Russia, and paving the way for Vladimir Lenin and a communist system of government. Okay, that brings us to the end of chapter number 12 in our video series. We will continue our course on pharmacology with our next video on chapter number 13, Gynecologic and Obstetric Drugs.